at any time uh, we can pause it and, and not be recording either. So we're in chapter uh, one. Chapter one? Yeah. Chapter one of our, of our book. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to bring up uh, um, the PowerPoints for chapter one and look at it. And we both know that that's not going to work, right? Because there are, uh, there's zip files and I have to come in a different way. There, notice that I also had the um, the solution manual and the test bank and the the, the web file sitting there too. So if, if there's something that you think you need, just ask. And, all right, so we're in chapter one. I don't know why chapter two has um, two sets, but we'll find that out. All right, so there's our book. Let's see. What do I want to hit? I want to hit this button here, right? Boom. There we go. Um, I never heard of the, the uh, St. John, St. Edwards University. Ever hear of that place? Nah, never heard of it. All right. So, um, data and statistics. Now, chapter one is um, an English chapter. Uh, I don't think we ever add one on one the whole time. So it has to do with statistics, how they apply to business data, sources of data, descriptive, statistical interference, computers, data mining, and ethics. Okay, that's what it's going to have to deal, deal with. Now, um, data mining, when was the first time you guys heard that word? Okay, that, that phrase, data mining, is that part of your normal everyday conversation? Um, you hear about it with search engines and stuff like that. Yeah. Collecting information. So it wasn't, I, the first time I heard about it was in 2003. I was in a fuzzy math class. And um, so you have regular math classes, and then you have a, you have a set of fuzzy math classes you can take as, as a graduate student. And um, so normally in math, we take one and one, and we add it together, and we get 10 type thing, right? One and one is 10. And um, in fuzzy math, you, you talk about red. So what's red? Is it one wavelength of light? Is it something that's not orange yet? Is it something that's not purple yet? You know, how, how far is red away from red before it ceases to be red type thing? And um, so fuzzy math does integrals and differentiation on things that are not necessarily numbers. Uh, totally weird, but uh, and now we have a TV show that does the same thing, right? Person of interest has this computer running that's going out there, deciding that people are in trouble and, and putting out social security numbers. So um, and as we as we build those data thing, I I don't have a uh, Facebook page. I refuse to have a Facebook page. I'm not going to put that stuff out there. And it's a data mining thing. You, everything on your Facebook page somebody could go and use to figure out um, how subversive you truly are. Let's see. It would seem like if I clicked on this, we should go to the next slide, right? Next. And uh, a little bit of luck, I don't have to go and... Maybe I do. All right. The term statistics can refer to numerical facts, such as averages, mediums, percentages, numbers. Um, they might be people. They might could be a number of people. They could be dollars and cents. They could be number of items in the, in the stock room. Um, but in general, it's talking about number things. Statistical things are, are numerical facts. Um, it can refer to an art of science of collecting, analyzing, and interpreting the data. So statistics is um, my ability to take those numbers and do something with them. So I, I take all your grades at the end of the semester and I put an A next to it or a B next to it or a C next to it. I'm interpreting those numbers 
and I'm, and I'm interpreting the data to do something with it. Accounting, yes. So um, my, uh, my youngest daughter is a CPA. She's got a master's degree in accounting, a master's degree is an MBA. Um, she deals with this all the time, you know, and she has huge amounts of ethics. She will not do my son's income tax because she can't lie like that. So um, economics, the jobless rate, what is it? 7.9% or 14 some percent? No, liars can figure and mathematicians lie, right? So finance, so, um, you know, do, do I buy the stock or not? Do I sell my stock? I, I trashed out my entire IRA in October. It was only a mere $30,000 left over because I figured that all it's going to do is go down. Was I right? Was I wrong? Doesn't matter. It's what I did, right? Pay for it later. It's all a taxable thing. Uh, marketing. If I can figure out what, oh, when, when you get your, anybody have a credit card? Most of the class, no one person. When you get a credit card statement, there's the, the credit card statement, there's the return envelope, and there's things to sell you, right? Those things to sell you, are they random? Or are they, were they are they in there because of you? Yeah. So first data in, in Omaha, which was Omaha, that way? That way, no, that way, yeah. Whatever way Omaha is, um, they uh, they have a, a sorting machine. They they, they do eighty five percent of all the credit card statements of the entire United States. They print them out a thousand a second on their printers. If you can imagine that, you know. And they have advertisements sitting in bins, and depending on your buying what you buy depends on which advertisement you get. And so they're, they're keyed to your buying habits. Production. So if I'm, if I'm making um, tires, well, I won't make tires. If I'm making an engine block for a car, how close do I want the tolerances to be? In, in the 1980s, the tolerances for my car weren't all that great. My cars lasted three or four years. Now we, we, we've gone and used statistical methods in the production of those cars. They're now lasting longer. Um, I have a Pinot. I had a Pinot, 1973 Pinot. I drove for 18 years. Um, my pickup truck's a 2003 pickup truck. And uh, I don't plan on doing anything until, except driving it and changing the oil. That's all I'm going to need to do. Because our manufacturing ability has improved because of the statistical analysis we do at the manufacturing site to make out the product better. Data, facts, figures, collected, analyzed, okay, yeah, I think I said that before. And we're going to study the data, okay, that's fine. The data will have elements, you know, individual entries. Uh, when, we, when we put the data in a matrix, that spot of the matrix means something. You know, that spot means whatever it means. Um, we can have a variable. So we can change the interest rate on our loan. We can have a variable rate interest loan. I, I have a house in Georgia that I have been rented for uh, 17 years now. Yeah, 17 years. And um, it has a variable rate interest mortgage for those 17 years. All it's done is gone down. What a cool idea. The set of measurements obtained for a particular element, so I have an observation. There is a Coke can sitting there. It's a Coke Zero Coke can. Does it have anything in it? Don't know. I'll have to figure it out. Yep, almost full. Yeah, definitely. So I, I have, those are facts that I observe, I measure them, I get them recorded someplace and I do something with it later. I could have n elements containing, now that's bad math. If I have n elements, I could have m 
observations. I, I could. I could have more observations than I had elements because I could go and look at an element twice. But we'll let it. We'll let it go. I mean, it's just a chapter one transparency, right? Total number of data values is the complete set of all of them. So I have a number 30, a test score, okay? And I've got 10 30s. So I have a frequency associated with that number. And that frequency and that number has to be kept together somehow so that I know that I have it. I'm making rubber bands and I, and I have them that go this far. I have 100,000 that go that far. I have to know that I have a hundred thousand. Um, oh, we have a company. Oh, there we go. So I've got a company. What is it doing? I don't know. Well, it's selling stock. It's got some annual sales. It uh, has some earning per share. So the, the data set is in the green. The observation is in the, what color is that anyway? purple I guess and I have various company names associated with it. oh look at this three six nine everyone's here now I won't have to take attendance I won't have to know any of your names isn't that wonderful you guys all know my name but I don't know anybody's name oh bummer I guess we'll have to start over from the beginning okay no I guess not now um, Scales, oh, those are things that you, you have on your fish, right, scales? So um, a nominal, an ordinal, an interval, a ratio. So an ordinal scale would be something like a one or a two. Uh, an interval scale would be five to seven. A ratio scale would be three to, three to two, three over two. And nominal would, would be almost the same as ordinal. So this is this is English, right? So I'm sure there'll be some multiple choice question about that and you'd have to pick one. Scale determines the amount of information contained in the data. Data summarization, blah, blah, blah. Right, well, that's good. Oh, now we're going to know what nominal means. Isn't that wonderful? So that would be names and labels. All right, East, that's a name, West, Millard South High School, you know, things like that. Uh, Non-numeric label or numeric code may be used. So I can still have a barcode there, 37949349333, and that could still just be my a nominal thing. Are we done with that? Students of a university are classified by the school by such labels as business, humanities, and yeah. Alternatively, we have a numeric code. One for business, two for humanities. What happened to math? One for math. That's what it should be. One for math, two for physics, three for everything else. That works? Something like that. And ordinal. Um, some ranking, some meaningfulness. It could be non-numeric or it could be a numeric code. I could do that. Uh, students at a university are classified by their class standing. All right. Junior, sophomore, etc. Or by some code. One, two, three, four, five. I could do that. We, at, uh, I think we do it by new and old. Let's see. We classify you guys by, um, yeah, junior and senior. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How can there be seven? There's seven juniors. Oh, yeah, seven juniors and two seniors. Yeah. So we have some classification on the attendance sheet. They're, they also have your final grade here. You want to know what it is? No. Oh. You don't? Okay, I just wanted to. That's what my wife said to do, have you all pass in your final grade at the end of the class so we'd know what it was and then we wouldn't have to worry about it. Anyway, interval. Data having properties 
um, some between two things. It's always numeric. Um, so SAT scores. So individual persons have an SAT score, uh, but the number of points between those two ACT, SAT scores would be an interval. I didn't think it went to 1885. Does the SAT go to 1885? Hmm. I have to think about that more. It's been a long time. I mean, the, my last kid to take an SAT score was um, 2001, maybe? Yeah, 2001. And it wasn't 1850. It was only 1370-something. Ratio. Data having properties, um, the ratio of two values. A's to B's, B's to C's. Maybe, um, can you see the screen better than they guys can say? Is that, is I can it, see it pretty well. You can see it pretty well? Can you guys see it okay? All right. So if you can't see it like you want, you may want to move to the other side of the room, maybe. In the meantime, distance, height, weight, time, use of ratios. Um, Scales must contain a zero that indicates there's nothing there. Hmm, nothing. So you could have bottles of beer on the wall. You could have no bottles of beer, right? You'd have to have a zero. Can you divide by zero? Not yet. Okay, can't divide by zero yet. Will you be able to divide by zero sometime in the future? Yeah, uh, second week of calculus two, you'll be dividing by zero. We math majors always have ways to get around things, right? So until 1820, we had no way around dividing by zero. Uh, we just it couldn't be done, can't be done. You can't divide by zero no matter what. In 1820, um, because that meant um, when um, when Newton did his calculus. He also only told four people about it and made them promise not to tell anybody until 50 years after he died. So Newton's calculus wasn't known to the rest of the world until 50 years after he died. The, the reason was is he was dividing by zero and he knew that that would be excommunication. The church would have to excommunicate him because the, the church was in charge of, of, of all the knowledge at the time, and that, that would be an excommunicatable offense, at which time you go directly to hell. And that, so, so I figured 50 years after his death, he was pretty safe. He was already in whatever place he was going to be in, and it, it wouldn't matter what the church did at that time. He'd be okay. You believe that? Yeah, that's true. That, that, that's a truism. Um, so the... Um, Let's see if I can get that out of there. The, uh, what was I saying? So it wasn't until some Frenchman in 1820 came up with a way to um, allow us to divide by zero that the calculus was a meaningful thing, that, that we could take it out of the, the Newton's uh, really clumsy notation and, and do it in a, in a very elegant way. And that's what we're teaching today to our students, what, what that French guy did. Okay, ratios. Melissa's college record has 36 credits. Kevin's has 72. Kevin has twice as many as Melissa. I think we just multiplied, right? Huh, I, I don't believe it. My calculator is still in my pocket. We just multiplied. I didn't think categorical, uh, what is that word? Oh, categorical and quantitative, multiple syllable words. I mean, what are we doing? This is a math class. We're supposed to be adding one plus one and things like that, right? Categorical and quantitative. It can be further classified. Okay, so it can be some category, green, or it can be some quantitative, 2.74, probably. Depends on whether to develop the data, 
as a variable or not. It's a, mm -hmm. The system analysis that is appropriate depends whether the data for the variable is one or the other. Okay, so if if it's categorical and I've got red, blue, green, and yellow sitting over here, am I going to add them together? Am I going to find the norm? Am I going to find a mean? Am I going to find a no, I'm probably not. But if I have numbers sitting over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then I can say I've got an average, right? But if I have red, purple, yellow, green, I want to know the range. We probably don't get to range until chapter five. But if I did, I, I couldn't find the range. It wouldn't make any sense. In general, there are more alternatives for statistical analysis when the data is uh, is a numerical data. So if I have numer numerical things, I can fudge the data more. Uh, labels or names, all right, for each element, uh, often referred to as qualitative instead of quantitative, quantity, qualitative, quality. All right. Again, we're not an English class, but this is chapter one. Use either normal, nominal, nominal or ordinal scales. Um, can be either numeric or non-numeric. And um, they might be appropriate or not, who knows. Quantitative. How much, how many? Discrete numbers. I could be continuous. Um, so, the temperature can go from 0 to 100 degrees centigrade. Does that mean it can be 59.3974283? Well, it could be. Yeah. So I could have continuous, or I could have discrete numbers. It's 0, it's 1, it's 2, it's 3, and I'm not going to take the data in between it. I'm not going to go to 30 decimal points past the 2. I can be discrete. You know? So. I have $1 bills, I have $5 bills, I have $10 bills, right? But I could also have $250.58 in my pocket, right? So, but money can't be continuous. I'm not going to have thousandth or tens of thousands or hundred thousandths of a cent. Well, maybe I could. But in general, I wouldn't. Um, anybody been to Europe lately? At all? Anybody been to Europe at all? Anyway, in here we have dollars, right? And we have quarters, and we have nickels, dimes, and pennies. In Europe, they have a euro, which is about uh, 1.7 of our dollars. So one euro is bigger than our dollar. But they didn't bother to print. They didn't bother to mint the coinage. It's very difficult to have a to have a a 50 cent piece or a 25 cent piece or a 2 cent piece in, in Europe. They didn't bother to do that. Now, why not? Well, when they did it, they did it by each of the itty bitty countries and every time they changed their currency, all this money was useless and then so they just quit doing it as a matter of course. And so you don't expect change. So you go and you buy something for one and a half euros and you give them two euros, you don't expect change back. Obviously, as Americans, that would not sit well with us, right? We would expect change back. We'd be standing there for two or three years waiting to get it because we're not leaving until we do. Um, it's just it's a, just a cultural difference that, that happens. And uh, uh, ordinary arithmetic operations are meaningful for numbers. Yes, so I can add, subtract, multiply, divide, take square roots. Uh-oh, somebody just looked in the window to see if we were here. Are we here? He, didn't, he wasn't there long enough for me to know who it was. I think it was the, the, uh, the short, skinny guy. What's his name? Kevin. Kevin, yeah. I think, I think it was Kevin checking to see if anybody was actually in the room. You know, these guys, I tell you, no one ever cares if I'm in the room. We're all the way up to slide 20. Anybody knows how long this slideshow goes? I knew there was something I forgot. Yeah, better, I mean, 
let me let me check. We all went to let's see. Chapter one. It looks like uh, yeah. It looks like we might be halfway done. No, I don't think so. Ah, it's hard to say. We might we might be still. Uh, no, we're we're in section one point two right now, which is page seven of the book. Oh, this is well. Luckily, we can go until eight o'clock. Now there is a technical problem, right? The BCS championship game starts at seven o'clock, and and we all have at least an hour drive, right? So that means we should be done at six. Yeah, that's one of those. I'll go talk to I'll go talk to the guys about that out there. Well, on our first break, we'll go talk to the guys about that. See if we should leave at six because of the championship game. Scale? I guess not. Oh, here we go. This guy's automatic here. So our data can be categorical or quantitative. It can be numeric. These are fun. I mean, I I didn't make these. these the author made these for me. Nominal, ordinal, nominal, bunch of words. How are we gonna? How are we gonna? It, it'll be so embarrassing, you know, to go the first day of the math class and never even add two things together. Interval ratio. Are we done with the slide yet, guys? Looks like we are. So that's what I can I can do with my data. That looks like common sense to me. Does it look like something that should be re reproduced on some <laughs> test? No, it doesn't. Yeah, Cross-sectional data. Cross-sectional data. Oh, good. Now we're, in, now we're in, on page seven. Cross-sectional in time series data. Excellent. I know exactly where I am now. Uh, data are collected at the same or approximately the same point in time. So um, 30,000 different spaceships are going in 30,000 different directions with 100,000 people each searching for a new world to be on. So, so at the same time every day, they make a, a count to see how many people are on board. Yeah, that would be that, cross-sectional. That's not the example they used, of course. They used some building in Ohio. But that's OK. Time series. Um, Data are collected over several time intervals. OK, so between 5 and 5.30, um, we, we did a count of the class. We're not all here. Between 5 and 6, we do a count of the class. We're all here. Between 6 and 6.30, we do a count to see how many are awake. And between 6.30 and 7, we do another count to see how many. So that'd be a time interval period thing where we're taking data. Data detailing the number of building permits issued in a particular county in the last 36 months. Well, who cares about that? OK, so here, we can go and make a graph. Isn't that lovely? You think they did that in, in, uh, in Excel? I think that's an Excel graph. Did you do that in Excel? Yeah, yeah, that, that's something you could do in Excel. Just a line a line graph. Um, the scale going going in the y direction up there that, that'd be that'd be an automatic scale that would show up, and then you'd have to put uh, things across the other side. But you you could do what what was that anyway? Anybody know? As a price of gas. Oh, the uh, I have a son and daughter in Connecticut. They're still paying four dollars a gallon for gas. Okay, so uh, my last fill up, because I go to Baker's, I got fifty cents off because I, um, I used my Baker's card. Right? So I filled up for two forty nine a gallon, and then I took the the receipt and I mailed it to my son in law, who's an accountant. Yeah, oh, I'm terrible. Um, internal company records. Okay, so where am I going to, oh good, we're in sources of data, 1-3, we're all the way up to page 10 already. Wow, awesome. Um, so where is the data I'm getting? Well, the, the company already has some, that's fine. The, there's a business database, Dow Jones will tell us something, right? We can go to msn.com, 
and go to the, the business website and, and ask for KO, the stock KO. Anybody know what the stock KO is? Yeah, Coca-Cola. Yeah, or or uh, C, the, the, the stock C. You know what the stock C is? That's Citicorp. So you, you could ask for it. Or you could put in so you could put in Citicorp and it tell you a C, you know, either way. All right. Government agencies. Isn't that great? The government just makes all these database bases for us and we can go get anything we want anytime we want. All we have to do is be smart enough to know what it is we want. Um, industry association. Um, what percent of the electricity in Iowa is currently made by wind? Anybody know? It's 15%. Um, it's huge. That's a huge number. Um, Iowa has, is the third state um, for windmills. Texas beats us. California beats us. But for percentage of the electricity we work, we're number one. Iowa's number one. Uh, we're building a, a several more wind farms. We're going to be 20% of our electricity is going to be made by wind five years from now. Um, just totally amazing. Um, how many nuclear power plants in Iowa? Zero, zappo, none. Why is that important? Well, nuclear power plants make electricity at about four cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, wind energy comes in around eight cents a kilowatt hour. So if you're not competing against nuclear power plants, it's easy to sell wind energy. Um, on the other side of the river, there's, there's two of them in Nebraska, two nuclear power plants, one of them offline, one of them online. Um, it's difficult to do wind energy in Nebraska because it just means your electric bill has to go up. But you go and get that data from an industry trade association. Special interest organizations like um, the Sahara Club. No, not high on my list, but you, know, you could go to those guys and get something. The internet. You going to believe it? Yeah, that's the problem, right? So I can go to the internet and get some information. Um, but um, so I go and I want to know how many A's are given out at Buena Vista. You know, so I go to the internet and find out. Sources of data. <coughs> data available by internal company records. All right. So I got employee records, name, rank, and serial number. Oh, let's hope they're not passing those things out, right? That's why we have a, I have a faculty ID number so I don't have to use my social security number to access my the other stuff at Iowa Western, right? But somebody, someplace, had to write down your social security number when you had the job, otherwise you couldn't get the job. Production records, some part number, quantity produced, um, the cost, the labor cost, inventories, um, record uh, of sales by region, Credit records. So somebody has to know the credit card number of somebody, right? Your credit card's no good unless you give it to somebody. And you really don't want to give it to anybody because you might sell it. Boy, we're in a real bad way here, aren't we? But those are those are sources of data that I I could get. Um, age, gender, income, household income, household size. Um, where was I? I was at um, footwear. I think it's a, and they wanted my email address. And I'm, I'm buying a pair of shoes. I told him no. He asked again. I told him no. He said, okay, fine. Now, I could have given him my email address, right? But it just would have been another junk email coming to my account every other day, like all the other junk emails I get in my account. And uh, so I, I you know, stopped this junk email. Government agencies, I thought we were going to save money and shut down the government. Statistics guys, a census. We have, why do we, we have to do a census. It's required to reproportion the House of Representatives, required by the Constitution. 
Um, it might be left over from uh, the time of, uh, of Caesar wanting to do a census to figure out how much taxes he could get. Um, or the, the British, they, they did the same thing in, uh, when was that, 1030 or so, they, they did a census of not only people, but cows, sheep, dogs, number of, of uh, barns you have. Federal Reserve Board. You want to know what our money is? Where the money went? Management Office of Management and Budget. Oh, good. Oh, I'm going to fall asleep on this one, I can tell. Department of Commerce. Bureau of Label Statistics. So all kinds of different email addresses we can go running to. Are those guys in the book? Oh, we don't care, right? All right. Uh, statistical studies experiment. So everybody out there who's trying to get a PhD in something, right, collects data about something and makes a report on it. Now, some of those things are available, some of them aren't. Experimental studies. Why do we know? Do, do, we, do we think that water's wet? Anybody here think water's wet? Yeah. Okay. How, how do we know that? You know, somebody did a study and got a PhD, and now we know water's wet. Yeah, exactly. Um ever as the largest study ever 1954 public health for the polio vaccine polio we eliminated that from the from the planet did we not that in smallpox i mean the, the, the amount of cases of polio and smallpox are almost nothing we had in the in the 40s and going into the 50s we, we had Weekly hospitals of people with, with polio dying off. And uh, now we don't do that. We had to shut them all down. So this observational data. What what is the well, how much what's the temperature today? Oh, that's what we're talking about. Cold? No attempt to made to control it. Um speaking of data, anybody know how much the earth warmed up in the last fifteen years? Zero, zappo, nothing. You see that data? Yeah, I'll bring it in to you. If I remember, I won't remember, but they are. The global warming people, when it went 12 years without warming up, uh, they said, well, it's got to go longer than that. It's got to go at least 15 years before it means anything. Well, it's gone 15 years and it still hasn't warmed up. Now, before that, it, war it had warmed up for a degree or so over the last 50 years before that, but for the last 15, it hasn't moved. That is not good. Why is that not good? Well, we're about 2,000 years past where the next ice age should have started. We'll be all dead before the next ice age, so it's not a real issue. Our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, it's not, you know, so it takes at least a thousand years to cool this place off and start an ice age going. Uh, data acquisition. Time requirement. Very time consuming. How much time do we have available? Cost of the acquisition. So, um, And uh, are we willing to pay for that cost? And there's going to be errors in the data. Who are we going to pay to correct the errors? And do we trust them to correct the errors? How can, how can we not have the data be misleading when we get done with the data? Oh, bummer. Descriptive statistics. So... It would appear that it's six o'clock. You think we should take a break? Mm -hmm. Or you think we should not take a break? Okay, so if we don't take a break, we'll have to cut 10 minutes off at the end of the class, right? All right, so that's our first 10 minutes we're cutting off. When does the class end anyway?
ten thirty or something like that. Yeah, eight o'clock. Okay, so eight o'clock. So that means we're not taking a break, and so we have to quit it uh, no later than seven fifty. Now the championship game still starts at seven. So okay. Anyway, just wondering about that. Um. So I read something in the in the papers that. I don't get the data, I just get the summary of the data. The, the world's go, is going, is all going bad. So, must be true. I read it in the paper, didn't you? Um, yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that. There's a song I sing about that, and we'll, we'll sing that song later at an appropriate time. So now we have an auto repair place. Um, and the manager wants to have a better understanding of why they're going broke. Oh, okay. So she's going to examine why 50 customers um, stole all this money from her. So um, cost of parts for my tune-up is 50 bucks, and I charge that much for my tune-up. Hmm. <coughs> Looks like I should have made money on every tune-up, right? Maybe. Looks that way. So we're going to arrange the data differently, probably. So my, there's my cost of parts and the frequency I fall into those categories. Notice that I don't have any labor costs here. So that could be a problem. And uh, percent of the frequency. So I'm, I'm analyzing the data and I'm saying that uh, 10% of the time I do something, okay. Now, oh, now I'm going to do a histogram, so that means a, um, a chart. So I go and put it on a chart so I can explain it to some salesperson. And here we go. Totally amazing. Yeah, there we go. Wouldn't you call that a bar chart? Why do we have to call it a histogram for? Can't, I can't even spell histogram, let alone say it right. All right, so there we go. We got a bar chart also. Known. It's a histogram <clears throat> because it's not a bar chart. Okay, if it was a bar chart, the the things wouldn't touch each other. They they they'd be away from each other. Okay, does that does that make any sense? So, a bar chart would look like that. The histogram because it's touching each other. Who, yeah. I just made that up, by the way, if anybody's wondering. Yeah. Huh? I did? Really? All right. That'll be, we'll do that. That'll be a question on the final. What percentage of the time was the instructor joking? Yeah, and then we'll, then whatever that percentage is, we'll divide it by your grade, and that'll, that'll make your grade either go up or down. Right? So if you said 90%, and you divided by 0.9, it'd go up a little bit. If you said 10%, then go by a whole lot. See how that works? Numerical descriptive something or other. Most common numerical descriptive statistics is the average or the mean. Okay, so average, mean, they're the same thing. So I'm going to confuse you. I'm going to ask you for the average. I'm going to ask you for the mean. I'm going to ask you if there's a difference. They're the same thing. Now, my glorious calculator will give that to me. But what I do, uh, maybe it's going to tell me what I'm going to do here. No. So I'm going to add everything together and divide it by the number of elements. That's how I'm going to get it. The average demonstrates the measure of central tendency or central location of the data for a variable. All right, so instead of just saying it's the average, now we're going to say, oh, that's the central tendency of the data. See, now, now I sound like I'm from Yale or something now. Yeah. I mean, but it, it'll get worse. Don't worry about it. You know, it's just, just starting now. So uh, in the auto part thing, we have 50 studies that we did. 79 uh, is the average. 
the average card to the par, um, average cost is 79. Add everything together. Okay. Statistical inference. So we have a set of elements. We study the set of elements. And we say um, um, all females have hair. Oh, that would that'd be okay. Oh, wait a minute. We have a sample and half of them are bald. So a sample would be the subset of the population. Um, we're gonna, the process of using the data um, <laughs> on a sample to say that, that the whole population is that way. Okay, so I want to know the average income of a household in, in Council Bluffs. Right, that's what I want to know. If I sample 10 people, Am I going to be close to that answer? So if I sample 100 people, am I going to be close to the right answer? If I sample 100,000 people, am I going to be close to the right answer? Okay, so if I want to be within 5% of the right answer, I'm going to have to have at least 700 people in my sample, is what we're going to figure out sometime in the future. Um, when, when the guys are doing the samples to see who you're going to vote for president, the sample size is, is normally around 7, 70, 700 people, and that, that's a plus or minus 5%, and that's close enough for what they're doing. If I want something closer than that, then I have to have a huge amount of people that I'm sampling. Now, that's lots of money. Um, so a census is where I, where I collect the data on the entire population. So let's say I want to know, how many cars does each family in Council Bluffs have? Okay, so I go to, to the, the uh, tax records, because every, everyone even has to pay taxes on it. And, I, and do I look at 100,000 households, or do you just look at 50? You know, how, how close do I want to be? Collecting data. Processing. <laughs> noise. Let's see. I think if we, if we stop this thing for a moment, end the show, and we come over here, and we mute the sound. Oh, lovely. Oh, isn't that great? Don't you just love computers? Yes. I have no idea why they did that. So now we'll see what they were doing again. So we have a population that uh, consists of um, everyone that ever had a tune-up in their life. We're just going to take 50 of them, and then we're going to find the average of 70, and then we're going to say, well, that means on average it's going to cost $79 to do a tune-up. Okay. Good enough for what we're doing? Eh, probably. Uh, computers and since now that we have computers on board we can collect lots and lots of data on my Excel spreadsheet how far can I go down you know, the first Excel spreadsheet would only go down 254 spots right it would only go over to Z wouldn't take very much now we can have double A and double triple A and quadruple A and and I can go down to hundreds and millions and thousands. My Excel spreadsheet right now has no limits, basically. Does it? No, I don't think it does. Only it's limited by your imagination. All right. So we're going to use computer software. <coughs> um, it was 1971. Can you imagine that? And I was student teaching at Benton Harbor High School. And I had to get a senior um, I had to do a senior project for college. So I gathered data on ninth grade, ninth grade math placement. And I brought it back and I gave it to the computer guys and they did a statistical analysis of it and show and, and, and made up a formula for math, ninth grade placement. No one ever used it, of course. Can be done. Uh, now we are fat, and those are our, back in the good old days with IBM 360 computers. Anybody deal with those? 
and punch cards and, and things like that. No, they didn't. They didn't? Okay. Yeah. Um, my first master's degree was written on punch cards going through an IBM 720 computer, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Long time ago. So I download to, in an Excel format, and I use some statistical tools, and I go and I, and I uh, do something with the data. Data warehousing. Let's see, data warehousing. Oh, we're pretty close to the end of the chapter. This is cool. Um, large amounts of data. Um, Walmart. Walmart is going down a path so that they can get rid of their 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 tellers. The, the the plan is to put an RF, a radio frequency tag on everything in the store, and when you walk through the door carrying the bag with the with their stuff in it, the, it analyzes all those things and charges your credit card directly. That, no, I'm not, don't look at me like that. That's what they're doing. Yeah, that's the plan. And there's no reason it can't work. Well, if you don't have a credit card, then you'd have to do something else, right? But but there'd be no shoplifting. There'd be nothing. You, you go to you, you go to the Walmart grocery thing, put it on your cart, wheel it out to the car as you're going through their sensors. They, all the tags are queried and and they all answer back, and you're you're charged for whatever you took out of the store. So would that savings that they're saving? be more than what they'd have to start paying for loss prevention? They be a lot of their, their, plan, their plan is that they won't have any loss. Yeah. That doesn't make sense at all. Hmm? That doesn't make sense at all. How's it going to correlate with the credit card? <coughs> spike your credit card? How's it going to figure out that that's you and not Joe Blow right next to you walking mm -hmm. the same door? Yeah. yeah interesting, interesting, pro interesting problem, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm carrying my I'm carrying my friend's credit card for him because I'm a nice guy, you know. Yeah. It yeah. Sense. Doesn't matter that it doesn't make sense. No. Um, let's see. I, uh, things have happened in my life that when I was your age, I would tell you couldn't happen, and now you're telling me the same thing. So the cycle still goes, right? Um, I think they're going to make it. I think they're going to get there in the next five years or so. And uh, you know what their backup plans are and, and how they, you know. Um, most stores have their own credit cards these days. So they'd probably issue their own Walmart credit card and that's the only one that you can do this with. Is probably what they would do. Um, your somebody monitored the entrance into the store. Yeah, I can. That's right. I know that you were there, and on on the way into the store, I could do a computer image of your body, and we wouldn't have to necessarily uh, do it with clothing on. We could X-ray you, right? And we could <coughs> have the right data on file and know that it's actually you. There's some degree of certainty, whatever the degree of certainty I want to have. Uh, maybe I do a a, um, a retinal scan, I, I, an eye scan, and I go on, on the way into the store to validate my credit card that I'm going to be using today. And then when I walk out, you get this query. So I can put an itty bitty tag on something. So I've, I've got this uh, $250 rifle, right? And I go over and take this T-shirt tag and take it off the T-shirt, put it on the rifle, and I can walk through the door with it and pay two dollars and fifty cents for it. Right? The tag is an the RF tag has no battery in it. It's queried. It's turned on by RF energy and responds. You know, how is it going to hang on to something? I don't, know, I don't know. But we're there. We're going to be there real quick. Visa. Processes eight six thousand eight hundred payment transactions per second. I doubt it. I'm I'm sure it's more than that. Must be old. Um, storing, maintaining, transferring data. Um, I got a new computer in my office last semester. The computer science guys wanted to know what programs I had on the old one so they could put it on the new one. I told them they can't. 
I have um, legacy programs sitting on that machine that are running in DOS. And I don't have any of the original software anymore. It's, it's legacy stuff. And, and so they ended up seeing it my way. When was the last time the computer science people saw it my way? And they put a new computer in my office, an AV switch that turned on, the, that go back and forth to the old one. So now I have the new one on and the old one on going back and forth. Someday, all the files on that old hard drive is going to go away. It's going to crash, right? So it's backed up someplace. Yeah, that's true. But someday isn't today. Data mining. Cool. Now we're in section 1.7. This is where it will be difficult for somebody to do a 9-11 again. Get on planes and fly them into big things because the data mining people are looking at those things ahead of time. They're correlating those things. They're trying to figure them out. They're doing it in fuzzy math. It's not, it's, it's because of what we're doing as a society that kept it from happening again. Our friends in the Middle East would be more than happy to have bombs blowing up over here. Wouldn't that be cool? You know, some third and fourth graders strapped with bombs walking into places blowing them up all the time. They'd love for that to happen. But they haven't figured out how to make it work. They can't make it work. Because we don't let them. We're so nasty, I tell you. Using a combination of procedures, statistical, mathematical, and computer science, we mine the data for, to get the useful information out. Most effect, effective one is automatic procedures. <coughs> um, my wife left her purse in the car in Benton Harbor, Michigan, <coughs> while we were looking at tombstones. Yeah, okay. The car was unlocked, her purse uh, was left in the car, her credit card and driver's license were removed from the purse. Um, it was a Visa card. It got used at a gas station to fill up a car with gas. It got used a half hour later to fill another car up with gas. At that point, the data mining people said, no, that doesn't happen. The card was canceled. It was walked into Walmart and to buy $250 worth of stuff at Walmart, it was rejected at Walmart. Before we even knew it was missing. Yeah. For it to you. Yeah. And your credit card was canceled before you even know it was canceled. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I traveled to Connecticut over the over Christmas break. I traveled back. Before I left, I called the credit card people that I'm for the, for the cards I'm carrying. I'm on a trip. I'm going to go to Connecticut. I'm going to come back. I'm going to be back on this date. Expect the card to be used in the I-80 corridor. And I, it, it was. It was honored every place it was. Everything was fine. If somebody, um, a card, this is a Visa card again, that's locked up in the safety deposit box in Bellevue. That card, that physical card locked in the safety deposit box in Bellevue was used to, to buy an item for $800 in Maryland. Okay, the, the, uh, It went through as a transaction. I got the money back the next day. They knew, they knew something was wrong. As soon, as soon as it happened, they knew something wrong. So uh, we have a Visa card. I have one, my wife has one, my wife carries hers, mine has never been used. For 12 years it's never been used. I lock it up, I, when I get a new one I cut it in two and throw it away. Okay, so but they always send you two, right? And But that card, someone had gotten the number from that, uh, had gotten the number of the card, had gotten the, the security code number from the card, and had made a duplicate one and used it in Maryland while it was locked up in the safety deposit box. Okay, so how 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 can that happen? You know? Your actual credit card company. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of exactly. That's right. So someone. No. Well, 
someone called the credit card company claiming to be me. Um, they had my credit card number from some other source. Um, they, uh, they, they talked to the little old lady on the other end of the phone into giving the security code out because they knew my mother's maiden name or whatever reason. And uh, anyway, it was, it was, you know, when they called me up and told me about this transaction when I was in Connecticut, I said, no, oh, that's kind of cute. <laughs> yeah. um, but there, now it's a police issue. The police get involved. The police get to figure out from the video cameras that are in the area if anything happened. Huh? No. I got, well, if they did, they never told me. I, I filled out a police report. Um, I got my money back. I'm happy. You know, we'll, we'll move on. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what data mining is all about. And, and I, don't, I don't have LifeLock. I don't pay for anything like that. You know, it's not like, you know. But the, the, uh, when you call American Express and tell them you're, you're going across country with their card, you know what their answer is? We don't care. Our computer systems are good enough to know it's you. What? No. What? What do you mean? Does that mean if I if I stopped at a Motel Eight, you'd reject my card because I never do that? You know. Is that is what? You know. What, what do you mean? You know. But yeah, that, their their computer systems. That's what they do. They sit there and decide whether or not this transaction in a split second is really from Doug Cordoville or not. Um, when I go across country, some of the gas stations want my zip code. Some of them don't. No. Some of them want to know whether I'm using a debit or a credit card. Some of them don't. All of them want to steal my information, take all my money, but they haven't. Data mining used to identify uh, processes uh, that you do. What you'd like to purchase, that's what I want to know. Um, identity of customers, well, who gets the discounts, um, methodologies, multiple regressions, heavily used correlations. Um, remember the, the movie Office Space? They, um, so one of the computer science guys made up a program to take the fractional cents of the savings interest and move them over to a, another account. And they, then the account had millions of dollars in it by the end of the movie. And they knew they were in trouble. Um, when they made that movie, I think it's a 1990s movie, um, that possibility had already been removed from the banking system. The guy that did that graduated from me, with me from Michigan State. He's the guy that wrote the C code, the COBOL code, that prevented the transfer of fractional cents to some other account. I don't know how he did it. He's one of, you know, you know how every now and then you meet somebody that's really smart. Yeah, don't look at me. Um, but um, I went when I when I arrived at Michigan State as a frac as a freshman. I had zero college credits. Normal, right? This guy, when he arrived at Michigan State as a freshman, had ninety six college credits. <clears throat> How do you do that? Well, you go to the right schools in New York City. <laughs> he took 12 credits a semester and four years later got his bachelor's degree and master's degree at the same time. I did 18 credits a semester and got my bachelor's degree the same time he got both of his. That's the good news. The bad news is he um, had a heart attack, died off about 10 years ago. So even though you're super smart, doesn't mean you're taking care of your blood pressure. <laughs> uh, so, to, uh, the data mining is going to take a lot of money. A lot of time, a lot of money. And how do we know what's reliable? You know, are we going to, how, how many times do we have to stop a 9 11 type incident from happening? You know, and do we have to stop all of them, right? We don't have a choice. We've got to stop all of them. Um, there's enormous data available. 
most of them you've given it yourself on your Facebook, you know, other places, just huge amounts of data. Um, other people using that data wrongfully, other than the U.S. government, no. Why not? You individually don't have the computing skills to do it. Um, in, in there's a community of hackers out there that hack into computers. There's about twenty thousand of them, and of those twenty thousand, there are fifteen that are are really good at doing it to the point where um, the FBI wants all of them in jail type good okay they 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 live in basements they don't go out at night they go don't go out during the day um, they're extremely paranoid but they're extremely good at what they do and um, any one of them could create havoc in our in our business system. Now the bottom tier, the the other the other twenty thousand on the bottom can do little things, right? But they can't do major things to the computer systems. Um, but we're all we're always trying to to do things. Careful interpretation of the results. Okay, well that'd be a good idea. Now we're to ethics. Oh yes, yes what we needed. I thought this was a math class. Does it say anything about ethics? But that is 1-8 ethics, so that's good. Um, unethical behavior. So I improperly sample on purpose. I uh, so I could could I could I sample the data to show that cigarettes are good for you? Yeah. Have I done it before? Not me personally. But but has the data been sat, done before showing that cigarettes in, increase your lifespan? Oh, yeah, you know, when, you know, when was the last time you saw the little old lady that smoked like a furnace that was 95 years old? Well, not since the 50s, right, because we don't do that anymore. But, but th there was a time when, when you could adjust the data to show anything that you wanted. Perfectly okay. You know, marijuana is good for you. We should all be smoking it. I can, I can adjust the data, right? And uh, I can, I can, you know, and cell phones, you know, how many, how many ten thousand, tens of thousands of people are going to die talking on their cell phone this year? You know, well, I, I can adjust the data and to show that all these things are good. You know, those, those guys that text while driving, they don't cause any accidents. See, so the driver that got in the way of them, right? Yeah. Interpretation of the data is also important. So we, we have some uh, some things, right? Some things that have to be considered. Um, I'm sure that uh, the Germans during World War II had very sound data showing that um, the um, the general population would be much better off if we if we were to kill all the people that were insane. And we didn't let any of them uh, have children. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of data showing that, right? Um, but, but that would not be ethical. would not be ethical to do that. That's the wrong thing to do. You should strive to be fair, thorough, objective, natural, um, as you collect and analyze the data and present the data. So um, this is where my CPA daughter you know, she was she was preparing tax forms for people, and they wanted to cheat, and she couldn't let them. It's not allowed by your CPA. Before you get a CPA license, you can cheat all you want on other people's tax forms, but once you're licensed as a CPA, you now have ethical guidelines, and you can't do that anymore. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Or you could lose your license. Uh, we consume statistics all the time. Are we aware of the possibility that they could be altered by others? Well, I think so. I, I don't. I don't think we're under any illusion that that you know we're listening to ABC News and they give us something that 
and uh, you know, may or may not be right. Who knows? Hard to say. American Statistical Association has a set of guidelines. Isn't that great? That's just wonderful. I'm just so happy for them. 67 guidelines for the profession to make sure that, that we don't do anything bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Who was it? Enron, right? Yeah, it was Enron. They, they, were, they were buying and selling their own stuff back and forth until they were totally useless. And their, their stocks went, uh, many people who were millionaires turned out to have nothing in the bank. And the scandal was over. That's an ethical problem. End of chapter one. End of chapter one, and it's only 6.30? Isn't that a bummer? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can get out of here. Click, let's see, click to exit. Oh, we exited. Excellent. So we get rid of that guy, we get rid of this guy, and we come back to that guy. Um, no one has the syllabus but me, right? Okay. No one has the syllabus but, oh, right here, right? I'm the only guy. Okay, so we can't know what homework problems to do without having the syllabus. So that's inconvenient. But so the so the, the goal is to get done with all the homework problems for chapter one, do a quiz, and get out of here in time to see most of the second half. All right, so problem number one. Now, as it turns out, the exercises are distributed through the book, but in chapter one, they're all in the same spot. Supplementary exercises. <coughs> or, are they, or are they distributed through here? Yeah, I guess we're on tw page 21. Okay, so number one, discuss the differences between statistical statistics as numerical facts and statistics as a discipline of study. Okay. Hmm? That's good. That's just, you know, that's fine. We don't care. Anybody care that she doesn't have a book? Yeah. We haven't taken attendance. I don't know who you are. It's sort of like that British show, you know. <laughs> The guy's turning in his test. You know who I am? No. No. Same thing, right? All right, so what are we going to do about this particular question? Well, we're just going to remove it from the list of things to do because it's a ball. Uh, so we come back to the homework problem. Okay, so the first homework problem we need to do is number three. See how that works? Is that good? I, you, we could have written a whole paragraph about that issue, right? But this is a math class. We should be adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, not doing something else. Okay, so problem number three, refer to the table below. If, if you'd like, you could uh, bring up a chair and sit next to me and look at my book. Or I could sit in your chair and you could just work them here. We could do it either way. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, just, yeah you can sit. All right. So we got a table below. And I have cars, and I have size, and I have cylinders, and I have city and highway miles per gallon, and I have the type of fuel. Okay, so that's that's what's listed in the chart. Okay, so what we're gonna do? I'm gonna move a chair. You want to move a chair up here? Oh, I'm gonna move a chair over there. Okay, that works too. And sit over. There. All right. So now, question A. Anybody know the answer to A yet? Uh, what is the average miles per gallon for the city? What do you think it is? 18.4. 18.4. Based on looking in the back of the book? Or no, based on? 18.2, but I may have put it on the Oh, bummer. You just add them up and divide. Yeah. Well, 
this, what we'll do is, um, Okay, so what we're going to do is, is on my calculator, we have a place to put the data. So we're just going to put down one more city. So I'm going to put on 13 and then 17, 16, 15. So I got the data in this table, and I'm going to pull the box up, so I'm going to go to the data there. If I go um, second function uh, statistics, and I go single variable, and I'm single variable, and I'm interested in one of my data sets, and I come to here and say check the column. Now it tells me the number. Oh, I only can get one. So I, I get I get an 18, but I only have nine of my data set, and I know there's 10 there. So I know my answer is wrong. Let's so figure out what that value is. So we'll go with 18.2. Um, do your books have answers in the back? Yeah. Yeah. My book has my book is the instructor book. I have even answers in the back. I gave you odd answer. I gave you odd problems because I figured you guys had odd answers in the back. Even number. Even number. Yeah. Even number. Yeah. Even number. Yeah. So what we'll do is uh, after number three, we'll change the rest of the homework set to one greater than what it is, so they're all even. Because we clearly want the answers in the back of the book, right? But I figured, seeing that I had even, you guys had odd, but I was wrong. So we want 18.2, 18.2 miles per gallon. All right, B. How many variables are in the data set? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six variables. So the type of car is a variable, the size is a variable, the cylinders, miles per gallon, highway, highway, highway and fuel. So those are the variables in the, in the data set. What are, you, what are you doing? I'm doing problem number three on page 21. And B, oh, what did I do? Read the wrong thing? Yeah. Oh, I, that was number two. So I answered number two, B number two. All right, yeah, that was good. All right, so we'll do it again. Good question. We got number two, three, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So it all jumps around. What number? What answer number? So you have different. You have some even, some odds. There. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we'll have to live with that then. All right. So what were we doing? Three. On average, how much higher? is the miles per gallon for the highway as compared to the city. Okay, so now I got I got to figure out the the miles the average miles per gallon for the highway. Oh, uh, well. 261 divided by 10. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put in a 19 Twenty. Oh, way to go. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Eighteen. Thirty-three. Hike. Oh, not hike yet. Thirty-three. Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-nine. And then you subtract, you subtract, you subtract the city average with the uh, highway average. 
Okay, I've got a uh, a 26.1 for this. So 26.1 minus 18.2. 26.1. And that should be something I can do in my head. But it what is it, it's almost seven o'clock and seven point nine. Seven point nine. Seven point nine miles per gallon. So on average, how much higher is the miles per gallon for a highway compared to the city? What percentage of cars have four cylinder engine? Okay, so we're gonna divide by ten because we know we have ten. One, two, three. Three times a hundred <coughs> equals thirty percent. There we actually there that we actually did some math on the board. Now we're going to change colors. D. What percentage of cars use regular fuel? Okay, so it's going to be divided by ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. 6 divided by 10 times 100%. And we already knew it was 60% before we did that, but, you know, we just did it anyway. All right, good enough? So now it's a matter of can you get your calculator to find the averages of those numbers? And if the answer is yes, the world is wonderful, and if it's not, it's not. Okay, so look at number 5 next. Consider table 1-7. Okay. Compute the average endowment. Billions of dollars. All right. All right. The average, compute the average endowment. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. A. Anybody know what the endowment is for Buena Vista? Anybody got that number in your head? Anybody know what it is for Iowa Western? Somewhere around five million for Iowa Western. I mean, we don't, that's not big time. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my data set. And, um, okay, right. 1.7. 5.9, 34.6 for Harvard, um, 1.4, 6.6. You know, you know why Harvard charges tuition? 2.5. Yeah, I just rounded it to the first decimal. That just went to the second. Yeah. Because people who run the first decimal then would have been uh, 2.7. So it's 2.65. It was 2.65. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we wrote down. Oh, yeah. 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 All right, I don't have a good number. Anybody got a good number? 10.66. 10. 10.66 billion. Well, it, it would appear that we only have two significant digits, and that we could go to three, but we don't have four. So that means a, a better answer would probably be 10.7 billion. Back to the issue of, of Harvard and Yale charging tuition. Um, they could run their institutions without charging tuition. And uh, because they have, their endowments are so high, the only reason they charge tuition is to keep you out. That's what that's what they're doing. And um, so they so they can be selective at who their students are. Okay. Next question. Commute, uh, compute the percentage average percentage of the admittances guys. Okay. And really, okay, so 
speed which would have come up to 43%. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get uh, 15.86? Okay, percent. But we really only have two significant digits, so probably 16% would be a better answer. So we'll go to 16%. Um, anybody know what the acceptance rate at the Coast Guard Academy is? It's 250 out of 10,000 applicants. Three percent. So the, the acceptance rate at the Coast Guard Academy is three percent, and all ten thousand of those are qualified. They're not. They're not. These are ten thousand of our valedictorians that have applied. They're only going to let in two hundred and fifty. Um, my uh, third daughter got to go. It was really cool. The, uh, the bandmaster is allowed to have fifteen people a year. For, that are music people, she, she got in because she was a music person. Um, clearly they, they want quarterbacks and running backs and things like that too. But. Totally amazing. Are we done with that one yet? No. What percentage of the schools have NCAA Division Three varsity teams? Looks like three out of seven. Forty three percent. What percentage of the schools have mid size campus settings? One, two, three. Three? Three out of seven. The same. Forty three percent. Okay, looking at seven. The Ritz Carlton Hotel <laughs> uses a customer option questionnaire to obtain performance data about the dining and entertainment services. Okay, for Ritz Carlton, Naples, and Florida, customers are asked to rank. Service food, menu appeal, atmosphere, overall appearance. Data was recorded for each factor, with one being fair, two average, blah, blah. The customer responses, data to say, are the variables categorical or quantitative? Okay, so back to English. Okay, so number seven, A. Do I hear any other answer other than categorical? Can't hear. No, it's categorical because the numbers mean good, excellent, fair. So the numbers themselves have zero meaning except as a replacement for the label. So that makes them categorical. So that that. That means I, I can't expect on any particular quiz to not see a whole lot of 100s, right? That, that's reasonable? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. What measurement scale is used? Isn't it non-numeric? Um, what measurement scale is used? I don't know. Don't beat the heck out of me. I was just here going through the transparencies. Um, so... Non-numeric measurement scale, huh? Data sources. Type of measurement scale. Okay, there's 
I think it's nominal. Nominal it's yeah, consisting it's of names. Yeah, so, so so you have a choice between nominal, nominal. ordinal, oh, nominal. interval, nominal. or ratio. It's yeah. So between those choices, it is nominal. All right. N -O -M -I -N -A -L. So on page six, all the way into page six of the book, in blue. It has nominal scale, ordinal scale, interval scale, and ratio scale. Okay, so that's number seven. Uh, problem number nine. You guys are much too young for number nine, so I won't sing the number nine song to you. Mm, I don't think so, are we? We could be on number ten. <laughs> You're right. We could be on number ten, but we say, but because the the book isn't all even in the yeah. back, it's random in the back. We're going with number nine. The Commerce Department reported receiving the following applications for the Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award. Hmm. 23 from large manufacturers, 18 from small manufacturers, 30 from large, 18 from large service, and 30 from small business. Is type of business categorical or quantitative? Right, so A, quantitative because it's based on size, right? So I go with quantitative. Q U A N because it's got the numbers. T I T A T I V E. So because it's small, meaning or large, your quantity, the quantity gives you small, meaning and large. So it's not, it's not categorical. It's not blue, green, and red. All right, what's the B part? What percentage of the applicants is from small business? Okay, so it'd be 30 divided by 30 plus 23 plus 18. Okay, my 30. Thirty divided by open parentheses thirty plus twenty three plus eighteen close parentheses boom. No, no, I got forty two forty two point two five. I fat fingered the wrong key already. Yeah, forty two percent. So 4, 0.42 is that answer, but the right answer is 42% because they want percentage. I did the same way. I figured out twice on my that Okay, 11. It looks like we're doing every odd one. Is that what we're doing? Yep. All right, well, that's fine. We can do every odd one. Unless I fall, when I fall asleep, the class is over, so... Number 11. Oh, this is way too long. Yeah. Somebody conducts vehicle quality surveys to provide on blah, 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 using the measurement, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. For each question, using the sample of vehicle purchase records, okay. is it quantity? So our answer is quantitative or qualitative and indicate the measurement scale used. Okay, so. You mean quantitative Yeah, whatever it says, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The reading was never strong on my list of things. You know, I'm, a, I'm a math major. I got a master's degree in double E. Reading was not there, you know. This is way too, this question is way too long to read. 
The price of the vehicle, I think that's quantitative. Yes. So we'll go and do quantitative or categorical first, and then we'll go down and figure out the measurement. How did you pay for the vehicle? That sounds like a categorical thing. Cat. That's good enough. C. How likely would you be to recommend the vehicle to a friend? That sounds like a categorical thing. Uh, D. What is the current mileage? That sounds like a quantitative thing. E. What is your overall rating of the vehicle on a 10-point scale from 1, unacceptable to 10, truly exceptional? That would be a categorical thing. Why would it be categorical? Because if the company is just looking at the numbers, and they're not looking, because you are not writing down if it's good or whatever. You're writing down 1 through 10, <coughs> because that's all they're looking at. So mm -hmm. there would be quant quantitative enough. But here's an easier way to think of it. You're putting it into a category. Oh. Yes, very good. That's that's Five better. That was much better than yeah. my answer. So you're putting your, you're looking at the category, and then you're looking about. Yeah, one, I would buy this car again. Eight, I wouldn't buy. Yeah, I would never buy this car again. Because I would think the company is just looking at the numbers. Yes, the numbers on yeah the numbers represent so the, the words. Gotcha. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So I, I would go with Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant response over there, by the. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, well, oh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> All right. Now we got to go with measurement type. So we got to go back to page seven. And. Um, and unit of measurement for. The price would be ordinal. It's on page six, right? Uh, yeah, page six. Yeah. Is it ratio? No. Uh, the unit of price is not, no, it's not a ratio. Uh, how did you pay would be a nominal scale. Nominal me measure. No, not nominal measure, scale, whatever. M I N A L. Uh, how likely would you be to do it again? That looks like nominal. D current mileage ordinal. Hmm? D. Current mileage. So, is it you know, when I, is it ordinal or nominal? I thought there was different kinds. Well, like when I took notes earlier, you told me that quantitative data was would be interval or ratio. Is or it could be. Or no, it could be. It could be ordinal. Because then I, well, then I have normal and ordinal yeah. written under categorical. So. Yeah. No, they. Um, so page six for a second. This is what he's talking about. The different scales of the measurement. Yeah, or no interval ratio. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he had met, he had spoken on his thing, and they just took notes during the part. Oh, someone someone had said something sitting in the front of the room, and somebody made the mistake of writing it down. Oh, <laughs> I'm in trouble now. Yeah. E, Echo, what is the overall rating of the new vehicle 1 to 10? Order of ranks, ordinal. I don't think that's ratio. Or ordinal, order of ranking. <coughs> Yeah. yeah, I think that has to be ordinal for uh, E. For E? Yeah. yeah, I think so. 
And now my opinion on this is is totally opinion has nothing to do with the truth, and, but it's good enough for homework. Are you sure you huh? know anything? What is your overall rating of a vehicle? So I'm I'm doing a zero E. Oh, Delta. The current mileage, you don't want that to be ordinal? No. What, you want, what do you want that to be? An interval. interval. No, but it's not an interval. Why? The current mileage wouldn't be between 10 and 30 miles or 1,000 and 3,000. The current mileage would be 37.58 miles. It would be a number. So the current the current mileage on the car would just be what it is. That wouldn't that wouldn't be an interval. Okay. Okay. I go out my car and I look at the mileage. It's a number, right? Right. I, I leave it in a parking lot. I go back tomorrow and I look at it. Is it going to change? Hopefully not. Yeah. So Unless, would it be? But if I if I drove it home and drove it back the next day, then it has a new number, and I could say I I, I have an interval. But if it's just one thing, yeah, yeah, I have to have two things to have an interval. Yeah, yeah, I'd be an interval. Yeah, yeah, it'd be an ordinal. Yeah, yeah. What would be ratio? Well, what are you ratioing it against? So you could have four of five. Uh, but you're only looking at one set number, not oh. uh, you bought it at 30,000 miles and you put on 10,000 extra miles. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, in order to be a ratio, you have to have yeah. two numbers. In order to have an interval, you have to have two numbers. Uh, <coughs> if you only have a number, yeah. then it would be an ordinal if, in fact, it, it wasn't nominal because it still could be nominal because right. it means something else. Right. If you say so, yeah, I, I believe. <laughs> All right, that was 11, looking at 13. That was the wrong spot to go, number 13. Uh, homework's going to be turned in. Okay? You're going to have your name on top of the paper. You're going to turn in the homework. Okay. Well, when you turn it in, I will. Then, but homework is is measured not served so uh, it's not a shame so you turn in your homework I, I look at it and it looks like it's all there I put a hundred in the grade book I don't go back and and oh you got it half right you have that no that one's not right no this one's not right 33 I don't do that so homework or give this to you the day before we leave? no homework is due the day of a chapter test uh -oh. So, so your homework is due, huh? How do you want it delivered then? On paper. Handwritten? Yeah, that'd be good. I don't care. Okay. Yeah, whatever. You just want answers? Well, um, let's see. What do I have here? That looks like I have just about answers, right? I don't see anything much more than that. I mean... It, it, it would depend on the question. If the question was, was um, you know, redefine the universe without any carbon atoms, then that would probably not have a one answer question to it. You know, it'd probably be more complicated than that. Um, clearly, if you're going to find a medium and a mode and a first and third quadrant and all these other things, and you're doing it with a computer, you put the data in and the computer tells you what it is, you write it down, um, yeah, you're just going to have the answer. Well, because no, what I'm saying is, like right now, I mean, you, you could write down the whole entire process for, for instance, 3A, you could write down the whole entire process of how you got mm -hmm. 18.2. Yeah, that'd be a waste of time. You just put 18.2. 18.2 sounds good to me, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just wing it, basically? I would I would not make it more difficult than that. Okay. Yeah. So why would I want to be picky for? You know, I you know, I have better things to do. Thirteen.
Figure 1.8. I bet you that's on the next page. Yeah, I see it. Okay, so there's federal spending. Yeah, I see federal spending. Uh, shows a bar chart. What is the variable of interest? Okay, so number one. Hmm, variable of interest. Are we interested in the year or are we interested in the money? Yeah, I think so too. So I'm going to put a dollar sign for that one. All right, B. What, let's see, are the data categorical or quantitative? Um, you think so? Whatever the word is, quant. I'm thinking of both. Because there's two pieces of data here. One piece is the year, 2002, 2003, 2004. And that would be a category. And then the amount would be a quantity. Yeah, sounds like a trick question, doesn't it? Yeah, but I, I think I'd go with both there. Um, because without the year, does the amount make any sense? Not really. No, so you have to have both pieces of data. So I, I think I'd go both. Um, <coughs> are the data time series or cross-sectional? I'm going with series. Anybody like anything else? So we, we have one time, and then we have a new time, and then we have a new time. So that, that looks like a series operation to me. Um, Delta. Comment. Comment on the trend. Hmm. That's it. It goes. <laughs> Oh. Notice how I did it with only single syllable words. This goes, is that a single syllable word? Yeah. Goes, okay, good. So I did it. So that would be the goal. This is a math class. If we're going to comment on something, we should comment it in, in single syllable words. Because it's multi syllable stuff like categorical that you can't even say fast without messing it up. Now, I don't know about it. That was, what was that? That was 13? That was 13, okay. Series is a two syllable word. Who? Series. Oh, that's great. Series is a two syllable word. Oh, yeah, but we weren't asked to comment. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so it's not a, we're not commenting on it. It's just what it is. So we had, we had two choices. The answer could be series or it could be cross-sectional, which is also a multi-syllable word. So those were our two choices. We had to choose one of them. So, yeah, you got that clear now? Yeah. All right. Are you just going to 225? Uh, yeah, that's as far as the problems go, right? I was just looking at your syllabus. You know, 25 is the last guy, yeah. There's no more problems in Chapter 1 after 25. And I, and I have all today and all Wednesday to get them, to Thursday to get them done. So I better start slowing down really fast. Otherwise, I have to start Chapter 2 sometime. Yes, we'll do, we're going to do some of these on Thursday, right? Well, that's, that would be my goal, yeah. Oh, nice. All right, well, why don't, why don't we go and do something different? All right, so we'll, we'll stop the homework now, and we'll do a quiz. I don't know how we're going to do a quiz, but that's, that's beside the point. Okay, so, because I don't have a copy machine, I don't, so, uh, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a quiz next. Do you write this down and this in? Well, it, it'll probably be like multiple choice, so yeah. You, everybody got a piece of paper they could turn in if they had to? Okay. All right, so that, the, the, the um, now we haven't done this yet, so this, but the whole idea is to waste another 20 minutes so we can leave, right? Because we missed our second break, so that means, you know. Yeah, and our third break. Oh, we got another class after this one anyway, so I might as well go until 8. Uh,
No, we can get out 20 minutes early. Oh, you can get out. Oh, you don't have second class? Okay, well, that's that good. All right. Yeah, I don't have second class. All right, so. All right, so I'm trying to figure this out. What am I doing? That's the wrong place. Okay, so here's documents, Buena Vista term three. Uh, test bank, there we go. Question number one. All right. <coughs> so how are we gonna do this? Okay, we got that. I'm in here. I'm in there. Okay, so everyone's gonna close your eyes. And I'm going to do a, a uh, I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to move him over without <laughs> putting the answer down. All right. All right. So this is our quiz. And uh, the first, let's say, I got to get that to this. Can you read it? All right. So uh, methods for developing useful decision making information. From large databases is known as. Data oh, you didn't have to tell the whole class. Sorry, I'm getting it perfect. You're supposed to be putting your name on a piece of paper. <laughs> sorry. Oh. I didn't like the interaction. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is going to take a long time. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Perfectly. I know. We can take attendance. That's what we'll do next. <laughs> then I'll figure out who you guys are. That's it. That's what I got. Um, oh, Lord. Um, well, is it Delilah? It's Dahlia. Dahlia. Yeah. It was Dahlia. Is that sort of like from Doctor Who? Those those creatures that go, oh, those are Daleks, right? That go around destroying the world? No, huh? Actually Dalek. Hmm? Pronounced Daleks. Daleks, so it's not the same. No. All right, all right, that's good. All right, Todd. Yeah. All right, so there's a Todd. Okay, Tara. Okay, it is Tara. Emily. Okay, it is Emily. Um, is it Ruta? Is that, is that really? All right. Travis. Yes. Is Travis Patrick? Yep. And. and um, <coughs> Jody. All right, this is Jody. Okay, and Ryan. All right, so there. I took attendance. Everybody's happy now. Wasted another two minutes. Okay, now, so now we need another question. We need another question for the quiz. Okay, so close your eyes so you don't see the answer this time. And uh, we'll pick one that's D again so that you won't have to look. <laughs> All right, are we ready? Now, let's see if we can you know, get this independently. Arithmetic operations are inappropriate for um, ratio, interval, both ratio and interval, or nominal scales. This is a math class. Tell me when, when arithmetic is inappropriate. I, I'm trying to, okay. So we got the answer to that one? Got that one figured out yet? No? No. All right. Uh, I, I'd mark it as number two, though. You'd mark it as number two? Yeah, I'd mark it as number two. Sure, because I would, it as we'll get rid of the one. <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you. All right. Let's see. Um, obviously, those are way too easy. We'll, we have to pick one that's not a variable. There There's one that's not D. That's a big quiz. Oh, well, no, it's just the whole test bank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, I have a lot to choose from. You know, I can't, I can't be bothered making up my own Is questions. Open the, open oh notes? no, definitely not. It'll be too easy for that. No, no, no. Close book, close note. Um, there, um, the final will be in two parts. The the first part, you do the first part, I grade it, and then I'll pass it back, and then you can have a second opinion nice. after I grade it. Yeah. Huh. Um, that, that'll work just fine. That, well, in fact, it'll probably work just as well as you passing in what your grade, what grade you want, you know, before we start. The scale of measurement that is simply a label for the purpose of identifying the attribute as an element is. 
Okay, do we have that one yet? Can I go on? Okay, so this is number, this is number, in case anyone was wondering, this is number three. All right. I can go on? Let's see. Where are we? How to get this somewhere? All right, that was a B answer. We, you know, here we go. We've got a C answer now. This would be much better. Maybe I got it. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's good. That just hunky there. <laughs> Lost total control. All right, refer to exhibit 1-2. All right. <laughs> okay. A political poster states, 57% of all voters approve of the president. This statement is an example of. Hmm. I don't have the poster, but I would probably say um, it's probably not a sample. Let's let's see if I can. I bet you I can make this guy bigger. That better? Well, that, that's a little bit better. All right. Well, obviously it's not that. Obviously it's not that. Descriptive statistics. Did we ever use the phrase descriptive statistics ever in anything that we've said so far other than this stupid question? <laughs> so it can't be that one. So mark, mark the correct one before you turn in your thing. All right. And that was number four? Yes. Number four. Alright, so we'll go to number five. Oh, um, Father, the, the, uh, is there any technical reason that the students have to be in the classroom to the end of class? Yeah. So if the instructor is going to take an extra 20, 30 minutes to put things on Angel and put the attendance in and things like that, 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 that counts for the class, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Just, I was just wondering what you thought about that. Yeah, I you know. Just as, as a technical issue. All right, we haven't we haven't had a B one yet, have we? Yeah. Oh, there's a B one. We need an A one. Yeah. I don't see any. Oh, there's an A one. All right, found an A one. Uh, I have to put your quiz grades in the grade book, right? That's going to take. A long time because it, there's, the grade book's not even made up yet. I gotta, you know, put the quiz in there. I got, I mean, this this could be uh, anyway. I guess that's big enough. A um, survey is a collection of a survey to collect data on an entire population is oh an entire population yeah. <laughs> That sort of gives it away. Okay, you ready to turn in your quiz? Yeah. yeah. After you, okay, so turn in your quiz. Go home. I'll see you on Thursday. And we'll continue with the Chapter 1 stuff. Control-Alt. Yeah.